Hello everybody. Today I wanted to talk about following the soul desire, your soul desire, and um, you know, how how that works and um, kind of like some challenges that you might face along the way of doing that. Um, yeah, because it's, it's really not easy. It's really not. <laughs> uh, you know, you just kind of have to go through it and really, um, you know, just kind of take it day by day kind of thing. So what is the soul desire? So when I, when I'm talking about your soul desire, I'm talking about, um, my teacher describes it as the thing that gives you the most joy in this life. And you know, that might be, uh, you know, you might not even have experienced that yet, like the amount of joy that it gives you, but just thinking about it, just, just imagining, uh, doing something that gives you joy, like that's your soul desire, whatever you imagine that gives you the most amount of joy in your life, like that brings you joy when you think about, when you think about doing it, that's the soul desire. And so, um, yeah, so the, the thing is like that, that's like, that's what you're supposed to be doing. All right. Right. That's, that's where your soul wants to go. That's what your soul wants to do. But at the same time, that just seems like a fantasy. You know, it just seems like a fantasy to you. You're just thinking, boy, I really would love to live in in a tropical paradise, just fishing and kayaking and just in being in nature, enjoying the 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 ocean, the water, you know, and like exploring the <laughs> the uh the the sea life. The, the coral reefs, things like that. And so, you know, that, that, that's what it is for me. And I'm such, <laughs> I am so far removed from that, from being at that place that I just like, feel like, you know, that's, that's what my soul wants to do, but that's such a fantasy, you know, it's so far removed from what I'm able to do right now. Like what, like, you know, I can't just, uh, you know, hop on a plane and move to Hawaii and, and, and live, you know, in, in a, in the house that I really want and, you know, just do the things that I want to do. Like if I did that today, like, yeah, I, that just wouldn't work out financially. Right. Cause so we can't have like everything that we want right here, right now, but at the same time, um, it's kind of like, you know, are you, are you committed to make that happen? Are you really committed to make that happen? Are you, um, you know, like, are you just going to let it be a fantasy and not live it out like your soul wants to do? Or are you going to, um, you know, just, just let it be a fantasy because your soul, when your soul wants something, it, it's a, it's not, it's not a suggestion. It's not, oh, that'd be nice. It's not, oh, that maybe someday, that'd be nice someday. But no, it's, it's a commandment. This is what it's, it's basically telling you, this is what I deserve. This is what I want. You know, this is what I want. This is what I deserve. This is, you know, this is what I need you to do, basically. <laughs> this is what I need you to manifest. This is what I need you to make happen in this world. And so, um, so it's really this interplay between the soul in the heart center and the lower self in the, um, in the navel center, because our navel center is like our, 
psychological programming. It's like, you know, it's, it's the thing that, that really manifests everything. It's the, in the Germanic, um, folklore, um, the, or myths, um, the lower self was, was the dwarves, the, the ones who created and crafted everything in the universe. Um, you know, they would make Thor's, Thor's hammer. They would make, um, they would make Odin's, what was it, his, his staff or his, whatever he, he carried, I think. Anyway, um, but, but yeah, it's like, they make everything in the universe, and, and so your lower self is responsible for manifesting. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just this, like, interplay between what, what we want in our deepest, like, essence, what we really, really want, you know, deep within ourselves, and kind of what, you know, the, the thoughts and the psychological, uh, the psychological, um, programming, basically. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the psychological programming between, you know, how, because we can want something all day. We can want something and we can obsess on wanting it and feeling like that's, you know, that's what we want. That's what we are supposed to do. But if we don't do anything in reality to take constructive action to make that happen, then it's, it's, it's pointless, right? We can want something, but it, if we don't do anything to make it happen, it's, it's pointless, basically. So, so, but the thing is, when we want, when we, when, when our soul wants something, it's, it's a command. We, we should treat it as a command, as not, oh, that'd be nice, but no, this is what I want, this is how, this is what I'm going to get. And so, we have to decide, you know. So, we have to decide in our lower selves, our psychological programming, um, you know, are, are we going to just let that be a desire? Or are we going to actually fulfill it? Um, and, you know, kind of like, it's kind of like the desire to, um, to get healthy, to get a six pack, to get, you know, really, really muscular, really, really fit. Um, so we can have that desire all day. We can have that desire all we want, but it's never going to manifest if we don't take action to achieve that. But, but having said that, uh, our, our lower self, the thing that manifests everything, the thing that will manifest your perfect health, your perfect, you know, living, living situation, your perfect house, your perfect, you know, soul desire, uh, living in Hawaii, all that. You know, that's what it is for me. I don't know what it is for you. But anyway, um, the lower self is responsible for manifesting that. And so, but the lower self is also our psychological programming. So if the lower self thinks, oh, well, it'd be nice to have, you know, health, a healthy body. But eh, that, that just seems like too much work. <laughs> you know, then then okay, it's just going to be a desire. It's never going to actually get manifested. And so, how we, you know, so our psychological programming has a lot to do with this. If we're not, if we're not motivated to take action, then we won't take action. And so, what this stuff is all about, uh, the, actually, this too, uh, the astrology readings that I do, and the Qigong, and especially the Qigong, but also the Kundalini Yoga 
and meditations and stuff that I do. That's all about retraining the, the lower self. That's all about retraining the lower self to, to do uncomfortable things, to do things that you don't want to do, to do things that are, that make you feel, you know, like, like very, very uncomfortable and things that you're, you're not, you're, you wouldn't normally be okay with, with doing. So it kind of trains the lower self, the unconscious programming to, um, to really, um, grasp, you know, to, to really, well, what we're doing is we're training it to align with and obey the soul. Um, it's just like a dog, like having a, a dog, like, you know, there, there's really good dogs out there, really sweet dogs, really, you know, companions that really, you know, that really, you know, are, are just such, uh, good, you know, so good to be with and, and make you feel good and, and like they love you and they don't, you know, they don't do anything wrong and they're just, you know, overall good dogs. But there's also, uh, you know, um, the like untamed dogs and vicious dogs and ferocious dogs and dogs that are being used in dog fighting and, and uh, yeah, just just terrible crap like that. Dogs that are being abused that in turn, like, you know, are basically, you get the point. Um, there's, you know, there's, <laughs> there's bad dogs and there's good dogs. Okay. So, um, yeah. So basically what we're training are when, when we do the Qigong and stuff that I, that I do over here, um, we're, basically training that like it's like it's like obedience training a dog like you know you get this this dog that has basically put you in po poverty put you in um a situation where you have nobody no friends no like you're just isolated and uh so the qigong basically or you know it can be whatever your situation is but basically you're you're not living from your soul you're not doing what your soul wants you're not you know operating from the soul so in order to retrain that we do qigong and that kind of you know that gets you know we 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 feed the dog we take it for a walk we make you know make it do obedience training we do you know, all these things with it to, to have it, you know, to make it learn that, you know, that, that following the soul is, is not torture. It's not going to harm it. In fact, it helps it because it basically helps it. It helps the lower self evolve from this, from this being who just wants to, you know, just kind of wants to like go into the into the depths and and live in a, a cave and live um you know where where live on its like primal instincts and drives um to it goes from that to uh the lower self who you know who actually manifests abundance and manifests good things in your life and manifests, you know, health, prosperity, finance, good finances, uh, all kinds of good things. So by, by doing the Qigong and stuff, um, we, we retrain that and we get it to operate from not a state of fear or not a state of primal drives and stuff, but a state of listening to the soul and listening to, you know, the, cause the soul is the authority the it represents the sun, the, the, 
you know, the sun is the authority, the government, the dictating power. Basically, your soul is God, and your and your lower self is um. How should I put this? It's like it's it could be described as a you know like the goddess or uh the yeah goddess basically um so it it's basically it it manifests things it gives birth to everything in in existence and so that's like the shamanic understanding behind this and um yeah i mean if you want to look at it in in a practical perspective like you know um your your actions dictate your reality that's what i'm trying to say like in a in a practical perspective your your psychological programming dictates your reality it dictates your perspective how you see things it dictates your actions and it dictates how people respond to you because you're constantly projecting you're constantly having that that psychological projection onto people and so people will respond to how you're how you're responding to them and they will react to your projections and so this is called uh what is it called counter projection it's basically you know it's basically we all are projecting our reality we're all projecting our reality we're all projecting the internal issues and so by working on the internal issues we can project the reality that we want so by working on our lower self we can we can train it to to obey us we can train it to uh to to work for us instead of be, instead of this being this force that's trying to you know drag us down it can be this force that's trying to lift us up it can be you know it's it's really it's what it is what you make of it basically um cuz you can train a dog to fight and you can train a dog to be very obedient, loving, and all that stuff. So, yeah, just kind of, it really depends. But but you've got to, that, that means that you have got to take charge of, you've got to take charge of your lower self. You've got to take control. You can't just let it do whatever it wants. A dog who does it, does whatever it wants, you know, without any boundaries, without limitations, without, you know, rules and, and confines and, and stuff. That's, that's, that's a dog that's out of control. That's, it's out of control. It's, you know, it's, it's not being constructive. It's, it's being destructive. And so, the same thing is true with your psychological programming. If you let it get out of control, it can destroy you. It really can. And I've lived that for many years. My psychological programming destroyed me. Um, that also had to do with, um, you know, health issues and things like that. But still, that's a result of the manifestation of my lower self. You know, it... So, so basically, in order to take control of our lives and live the lives that we really want, we need to take control of our lower self. Alright guys, I'm gonna wrap up with this final analogy here for you. Um, give me a sec. So basically what I was trying to say in the beginning is, you know, when we follow our soul desire, there's a, there's, okay, so there's, there's going to be this area between our, 
our soul's fantasy, our soul's desire, our ultimate, our ultimate fantasy, our ultimate desire, ultimate, um, ultimate, like, life that we want to live, the, the ultimate command of our soul, there's going to be a distance, a, a, a difference, a separation between that place, that, that seems like fantasy, just utter and complete fantasy, and where we are today. So, if you take where we are today, that's this hand, and you see that where, where our soul wants to go, this hand, there's this space in the middle, right? So, um, so yeah, so, so, the space, I, I see it as like this long road, and, and you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're looking at this road and thinking like, how long is this going to take for me to, to reach my, you know, my ultimate fantasy that, that my soul gave me, right? So we're, we're, you know, and so each, each constructive action that you take is a step towards, towards your soul's desire. That's a step in the right direction. You know, each constructive action that you take, you know, me, for example, me uploading these videos every single day on my YouTube channel because I know that I, I need to grow my YouTube channel in order to fulfill my soul desire. Well, um, me, me taking action towards achieving that, me, that means I upload a video every single day, no matter what, um, you know, that, that's a step in, in the right direction down this path, right? So we have this long 100 mile road that we take one step and what, and then, and another and another, and we're doing this day after day, week after week, year after year, hoping that someday we'll find, you know, thinking, you know, well, it's kind of like we're walking this path, but we don't see the results. We don't see any signage. We don't see any flashing lights saying, this is the right way. You're doing the right thing. Keep going. Keep going. There, there's none of that. No encouragement. No, nothing. So, um, so then we begin to doubt, doubt ourselves, right? So we, we're, we're looking at this compass. Well, our, our compass is our soul desire, right? So we're, we're looking at the compass. It's saying this way, yep, you're going on the right track. You're doing the right thing, but it's just a compass and we are in the middle of nowhere on this long dirt road. <laughs> and we have no signage that says, you know, keep going, you know. So, so although our compass is right, we, we begin to doubt, doubt ourselves and we begin to think, we begin to stop while well, we stop and we say, is this really the right road I'm supposed to be on? Is this r really the right thing I'm supposed to be doing? Uh, should I, should I maybe turn back? Should I, should I, you know, take a detour? Should I, you know, it's kind of like this, uh, thing where you don't know, like, I experience this as putting in, putting in the work, but not 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 seeing the results basically so the longer that you can so the longer that you can put in the work without seeing the results the the less problems you'll have <laughs> but us naturally being human we want to see the results of our work we want to see you know the the reward for our efforts and so uh so it it begins it becomes this really uh, difficult thing where we're trying to figure out, did, am I really doing the right thing? Am I going the right direction? Did I get lost? Did I get misplaced? Did I, you know, what's going on? And so we begin to doubt ourselves. But the more and more we doubt ourselves, the more, so, so remember, taking constructive action is like taking steps on that, 
on that road and further in, okay? But doubting is like stopping or taking, yeah, it's, it's like stopping. And so the more we doubt ourselves, the more we stop, the more we are delaying our, <laughs> the, the more we're delaying ourselves in achieving our goals, in achieving what we want, you know, because that it's, it's a certain amount of distance between where we are and where we're going. And so like, you know, that, that distance doesn't change. It's, it's, you know, we have to take steps to, to get there. And so every time we doubt ourselves, we're just procrastinating. We're just uh, delaying the, the destination. We're delaying our time to get there. So yeah, the more we doubt, the more we delay, the, the longer it's going to take to get to where we want to go. So yeah, it's so it's just one of those things where you got to put in the the consistent constant hard work and you know just know that you're going in the right direction know that it's going to pay off when when you um when you when we when you put in the hard work like it it doesn't seem like it's going to pay off because we're so attached to that, you know, that, that, that reward, but it's, it's almost like a, a dopamine thing too, because, um, you know, dopamine gets triggered when we, when we do certain things, like look at the phone and look at, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, but the more we can trigger this, uh, this response of, you know, being okay without having the reward, then the the better we'll do, you know, because the, re the reward is not going to come until we've reached our goal. It's, it's just not, it's, it's when we've reached our goal that we will receive the reward and then we'll look back and say, oh yeah, all that was worth it. All of that, you know, all the issues, all the hard times, all the everything crappy that I had to go through was worth was worth it because now look I, I have this, you know, I have what my soul wants. So yeah, it's just uh one of those things guys. So uh if you're going after what makes you happy, my my um my encouragement for you would just be to uh to say just just keep going no matter you know it's like that uh nemo Dor what is it called uh that one character in nemo just keep going just keep going no matter what no matter how it feels because we can have all these you know thoughts and emotions and feelings about what we're doing but it doesn't matter um it it doesn't matter but it does matter to us, but it doesn't matter to the universe. Basically, the universe responds to our actions and not our feelings. Um, the universe is a place of action, and it responds to our actions and the things that we do, not how we're feeling or anything like that. And so the less we can make our feelings a priority and the more we can make you know, taking constructive action a priority, then the better we'll be, the, the, the faster we'll get to where we're going. Um, yeah, and so it's just a matter of being okay with our feelings, you know, just allowing us to, allowing ourselves to have the feelings that we have without judging them or without, you know, making, you know, feeling like we shouldn't have them anything like that, uh, just, you know, just have them, just, just feel them, and let them wash over you, and, and, you know, let them express themselves, because that's what they want to do, so, um, that's the only way it's going to, um, get better, is by expressing our emotions, and, 
and having them and filling them and letting them have their space, creating a safe space for them uh, to to just be without without judgment or criticism. So guys, alrighty, I guess I will talk to you later. Um, I hope you got got something out of this because <laughs> I'm not not sure I you know really vocalized what I wanted to say. I think I did it in a good way, but I mean we'll see. All right, guys, keep following your soul desire. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Peace.